Thank you for being here. Uh, by the way, what do, you, what do you make of this zero inflation comment of the president? I mean, it, it, food is still going up. Rent is still going up year over year. We still have inflation we haven't seen in 40 years. What do you make of all this rhetoric? Well, I, I think it's good rhetoric for them. Uh, it's great to see you today uh, where you have, you know, inflation didn't go up month over month, but we're certainly seeing this go up quite a bit over the last year. I mean, even the CPI measure showed 8.5 percent year over year. When you go through the different items of how much they're going up, gasoline prices up 44 percent over the last year. Food at home up 13 percent. You just go after one thing after another that families are trying to put food on their table, you know, get from one place to the other. And this administration and their bad policies are putting them in a situation where they can't do those things, where they can't live the life that they would like to live. And we'd really like to see more pro-growth efforts than these big government socialist policies that they're putting in place. And by the way, let's be clear, the reason gas prices have come down is this incredible drop of demand. We now have demand for gasoline at levels that we haven't seen since the 2020 lockdowns, since the summer of 2020. Uh, it, it's that drop in demand because of demand destruction, which is causing the, the drop in the price of gasoline, right? That's right. I mean, we've had two consecutive quarters of declining real economic output, which since 1950 has been determined to be a recession every single time. And so I think we are seeing an economic recession. Um, and there's a lot of jobs that are being lost across the economy in certain places. Some of the headline numbers look good. But whenever you look deeper down into these jobs reports, those numbers aren't as good. And so people are feeling this, um, this brunt of the economic circumstances that we're in from too much government, too much spending, too much taxing, too much money printing, which is creation, inflation, and stagflation that we're in today. By the way, uh, we had just this morning this, this uh, number, very disturbing number from the New York Manufacturing Index. We were expecting a, a print of plus five. Instead, we got a negative 31. Uh, again, those are numbers that we haven't seen since, since the depth of the, the pandemic recession. Uh, and then, of course, we have China coming out with very slow numbers as well. So we may get a drop of inflation, but for exactly the wrong reasons. Well, that's right. I mean, if you have less economic output, fewer people buying things, demand is falling off a cliff, all of these things will push down prices. But you're right, not for the right reasons. Really what we want is more production more economic output, more oil and gas production that the Biden administration continues to put more regulations in place, forces ESG, environmental social governance sort of issues, which is a lot of wokeness that's going into place, when really we need reliable fuel that comes from fossil fuels. And if you take that to so many other places throughout our economy, throughout different areas, we would have a more robust economy, more jobs being created, and less inflation. That's the key yeah. part here. By the way, there's one thing that's going to be going up no matter what, and despite what is said in the so-called Inflation Reduction Act, and that's the budget deficit. If you have a slowdown in economic activity, and we see it around the world, by the way, it's not just the United States, but with all this extra spending, aren't we going to see even larger budget deficits, even though the Reduction Act claims it's going to go down? Yes. There will be larger budget deficits. Uh, what you see is that we'll have a lot of excess spending early on over the next five years. And then the tax hikes really come in the last five years, which is where they can show that there's going to be some sort of an increase in taxes that are going to reduce the deficit. That's over a decade. But, but I really think that's a rosy pic picture, that that's not going to come to fruition. What we're going to see are high de higher deficits, that the Federal Reserve will have more ammunition to print money, making too much money, chasing too few goods because we have too high a taxes and too much regulation. Yeah. And that's going to lead to the stagflationary pressure. It's a really bad situation, David. Finally, the, the worst thing in my mind, it may, may not be the biggest thing, but the supersizing of the IRS, it just seems to be so ridiculous to me because of the fact that all yet you, you don't have to be supersizing. You can be downsizing the IRS if you simplify the tax code. Come to some kind of flat tax where you get rid of a lot of deductions instead of adding more of them. Uh, for green, green energy things, et cetera. But if you simplify the code more, you need less of the IRS because you don't need as many accountants. 
Well, amen. You're exactly right. Uh, I really think that's what we should be doing here. Instead of adding maybe an extra 87,000 IRS agents over the next few years, uh, what we should be doing is finding ways to simplify the tax code. You know, a lot of this is where you say, okay, how much are they actually going to get in more tax receipts? I think that they're claiming around $200 billion. That's, that's going to be way too high. And if they're going to do that, they're going to have to go over to people and audit them that are below $400,000 right. a year. This is a huge way to, I think, militarize the IRS in some sense. And this is a bad way for America to be going. I think we should be simplifying the tax code instead. Vance Ginn, good to see you, Vance. Thanks so much for being here. Appreciate it. Well, there is growing Thank demand you. to release 